Welcome to the Miniatures Paintbrush. Today I wanted to talk a little bit about No Quarter's new magazine, No Quarter Prime. Hey guys. Uh, today I'm really excited about this magazine called No Quarter Prime, and I'll get into that in just a bit. A little background about me. I love reading magazines. I grew up reading uh, car magazines. Road and Track was my dedicated one since 11 years old, cover to cover. I love magazines. It's the way it is. Now, uh, when we moved to the digital age, everyone was saying that magazines are going to go to the wayside, and I guess maybe one day they might, but right now they're pretty strong. I do like written material, but I read all kinds of sources and I pull from a lot of different sources to help me paint. One being Scale Auto Magazine, that's one, uh, which a lot of references and I love doing it because I love building model cars. I also uh, read Fine Scale Modeler, a really cool uh, magazine and also helps me out. They even have some miniatures that they have in there as well. But the techniques and weathering in this thing, amazing. All right, I also read uh, The White Dwarf, there you go. Uh, GW's content that's really entertaining and chock full of stuff back cover to cover and really thick so you do have a lot of reading material there um, which is great it really is but nothing nothing has compared to No Quarter Prime I started into Wargaming by collecting troll bloods. I thought they were kind of cool. I wanted to paint them myself, and before you know it, I gathered a couple of figures. I painted them, learned how to paint miniatures on it, or relearn, I should say, uh, and using airbrush and all these kinds of techniques. And, you know, I kind of wanted to do something with the troll bloods. After I just painted them and had them around, I figured, hey, I can play with them too. Well, that's interesting. Okay, so, you know, I go down and I go into the wargaming scene and, you know, I have a group that actually plays uh, War Machine and Hordes. So I bring my little faction down. They're helping me out through the ups and downs. Learning curve is pretty steep. But uh, there was very little material that I can source when it comes to the lore. I really am into lore. I'm into a story. I used to be a DM. Um, I might get into that one day as well. But I really like a story, a reason why I'm fighting. Yeah, this magazine has wonderful sections. The first section uh, being the Fire and the Forge. And in this section, the Fire and the Forge, they have a history lesson uh, of a Signorian army. Now, I don't play Signar, but still, it was interesting and intriguing, and I can see later down the road uh, a coverage of Troll Bloods, which would be amazing. So, I'm really getting into it. It's starting to read like a textbook, more like a social studies historical, a historical textbook, and even has maps to scale, where reinforced troops come in and join, Kadoran in advance. I mean, it's an amazing story. But then it breaks off into individual stories, and it reads like a book, like a novel, and you're kind of trenched in there, feeling the pain of the end of uh, Signar, watching the, the anxious uh, attack of the Reds, uh, Kadoran army, and it is really enjoyable read, and you get to learn a little more about the background of the story. But it doesn't stop there. You see, next you have Company of uh, Iron. Now, Company of Iron is like this little scenario in which you can play uh, smaller kind of forces, and which is exactly what I have right up my alley. Right up my alley. And, you know, you don't have a war caster, but you have somebody you assign as your leader and you fight out little armies and little skirmish games, which is really cool. And they have scenarios that actually come into uh, play here. But not only that, they also have the cards of the, the factions and the people playing in it. Uh, and they come up with multiple scenarios that you can play uh, with a friend. And it's just, you know, one publication. And the Company of Iron on this one is called uh, Demon Head Pass. It was really important impressed by that because uh, also what they have is included into this section are different modes of painting factions. They have Minion Pharaoh in there, they got Signar. Of course this magazine is de dedicated to Sig Signar. I think I'm saying it right. I really hope I'm saying it right. 
correct me down in the comments if I'm not. But the Company of Iron is great. I mean, uh, there's also a Hostile Territory, and that's a Tower of Judgment playing larger game scenarios in which they have uh, as well. This is exciting. There's a lot of information here. When I read through it, it's not just a whole bunch of pictures and that's it. Don't get me wrong. Great pictures are included, but this is very focused driven magazine. It has a purpose and the purpose is to get you playing more scenarios without having to buy a new starter set or, or any other large type of book. This thing cost nine bucks. White Dwarf cost me 10 bucks. Maybe a little thinner, but this has more usable content than a White Dwarf, in my opinion, uh, at the moment. They have the Trencher CIDs in here. Uh, I don't play as a Trencher. Uh, Signarian Trencher. I really hope I'm saying that right. Uh, but they have the CID here with all the information you possibly can need to actually form a Trencher crew. Uh, and, oh, there's this painting section in this called Table Ready in Five Steps. Now, I put a former video called um, I Don't Play Unpainted Armies. So, I mean, I do have an entire army set that I will not field until I actually get to painting them. And that might take longer than most people are comfortable with because I am patient while a lot of people I know are not patient. Um, and I gain patience through the hobby, which is amazing. Uh, so, painting in 5 easy steps, it can get models table ready so I could play a painted army. So I'm fighting against a whole gray blob uh, or I'm not fighting against the whole gray blob anymore, and I actually have painted figures out there, and they're easy and good-looking for tabletop standard. And tabletop standard is, it looks good from that far away. Which, if I'm feeling my guys against your guys, and they're that far away from me, it looks fine. Uh, you know, I like to paint mine... I go all out. I mean, it takes me forever to paint mine, but that's okay. I like, I'm like. i really cool with that. Uh, but playing against an army that's painted is better than paint it, uh, playing against one that's unpainted, period. There is no ifs, ands, or buts. The aesthetics of it draw me into it. It's why I start painting miniatures to begin with, is the aesthetic. So table ready in five steps help. Uh, people who don't really are intimidated by painting these models, helping to paint the models simply, roughly, effectively to get them on that table and to play games so this way you're not intimidated by the hobby process. They also have Iron Kingdom's RPG. That's right, RPG. Um, I'm a bit of an RPG buff. So I'm excited. I am, I am going to read through that section, but I'm really excited. I haven't read through that section just yet, but it's still an RPG. Being a D&D &D fan, being a Pathfinder fan, uh, even being a White Wolf fan. RPGs, I love the experience you get with uh, a local group, which you become really, really close when you play with a crew like that. And uh, the experience is unforgettable. Uh, finally, building a theme force. Theme forces are huge, huge right now uh, in Privateer Presses, uh, Warm Hearts, and it is the way that things are going. Therefore, it shows you how to build theme forces uh, and it's step by step. So, taking the army building process uh, and figuring out which models to get, it's just eliminated uh, to that extent anyway, giving you options. Now, me being not well, not being a war gamer myself, more being just a painter, not as just as, but still a painter, uh, being my main focus. I'm not really good at the strategy. In fact, I am struggling sometimes with some of the rules of the game because there's so many. And again, the learning curve is pretty steep in this game. Uh, in other games, it's so much easier to get into. Uh, so. I just wanted to bring my review of No Quarter Magazine. Uh, the only bad thing I can say about this thing is that it's so flimsy. Starting to crack right there. 
but I've used it a lot. So, I mean, that's the only thing I can say about that. But even my fingerprints and my the grease on my fingers are not rubbing off on it, which is definitely a plus. Some magazines, they do rub off on it. But um, I've carried this around for, you know, is this week two now? Yeah, I think so. Week two now, and wow, wow, wow. I am really impressed by No Quarter Prime. And yes, I will buy the next uh, issue and issues after that. And I'm excited to see the next one. And I love delving into this whenever I get a chance. So I highly recommend that if you play Warmer Hordes and are into lore like I am, then pick this up. Definitely. It's awesome. Oh yeah, thank you for watching. And if you like this video, like, share, and subscribe. And I'll catch you next time on the Miniatures Paintbrush.